On one hand, India's Minister of External Affairs was showing his concern for the human rights situation in the United States, and on the other hand, a female professor in the United States was making headlines for abusing and insulting India. But before I respond to the American professor's remarks on India, let's try to understand why many Americans often sound so abusive and insecure, and what it is in America that has given birth to a mentality that reflects superiority complex and hatred. To understand the United States, we must first understand its very foundation and its very existence, and to understand them better, we must go beyond America's carefully projected shiny image. Yes, hypocrisy dies a thousand deaths when many Americans proudly sing their national anthem, which has words like the land of the free and the home of the brave, while ignoring the fact that these words were written by a man who himself owned slaves, and forgetting the Americans who described it as the land of the thief and the home of the slave. Yes, the United States is a country whose presidents themselves owned slaves. From George Washington to Thomas Jefferson, who owned over 600 enslaved people, in total there were 12 American presidents who owned slaves. Yes, this may bring shivers down your spine, but among these founding fathers of America, from whom the superpower nation takes its inspiration, there were slave owners. James Madison, America's father of the Constitution, was a slave owner. America's father of the nation, also a slave owner. America's father of the Declaration, a slave owner too. So is this also a part of the rich heritage that Americans brag about? Even today, streets, buildings, schools, colleges, monuments and many places all over the United States are named in the honor of slave owners. Not only that, the United States Capitol building, the so-called symbol of freedom and democracy, used slave labor in its construction. And of course, enslaved people were involved in every aspect of White House construction. So does it mean that many Americans take pride in things they should actually be ashamed of? Yes, there are countries that continue to exist on something that has been described as stolen land, and yet they have the audacity to claim to be free and independent. Unfortunately, America's sanitized history will continue creating Americans who are supremacists, but perhaps it's time for Americans to open their eyes and recognize the ugly reality around them. Is it right to say that the land that you are so much in love with is actually a product of ongoing European expansionism that has still not properly ended yet and is just going for a more deceitful or advanced stage? Unfortunately, Professor Amy Wax isn't the only American who has used this degrading word against India or against those who were formerly colonized or enslaved. During his presidency, Donald Trump also used that word, which triggered a strong official response from several African nations. But before this American female professor uses any insulting or racist terms against India or non-Western communities, may I ask if she is concerned about the open defecation on the streets of San Francisco, where there were more than 20,000 poop sightings in just one single year? Or how about the brutal conditions of America's janitors who clean America's toilets and buildings but face wage theft, oppression and abuse? How about the female cleaning workers who face sexual harassment and rape? Many who clean your toilets are oppressed immigrants who are just too weak to raise their voice. Or how about the biggest cover-up operation from one of the biggest waste-producing nations which dumps almost half of its trash in landfills? Or how about dumping millions of pounds of waste in poorer countries and exploiting their land and people? And how about being the worst polluter in the world's history when it comes to emissions in cumulative terms? Or how about being among the top two producers of space junk? <laughs> yes, it is not just Earth, you are polluting space as well. Or how about the fact that you participated in the Gulf War posing as a superpower when 1.1 million American households didn't even have proper sanitation facilities? Yes, a superpower with 1.1 million households without proper toilets. And how about the brutal oppression of the indigenous communities who faced forceful Christianization, whose land and children were stolen, and who continue to face racism and oppression even today? How about you, even today, making easy money through oil drilling and violating their human rights? 
And how about these 37 million Americans who are in poverty? And this widespread child poverty? And these millions of American children who are struggling with hunger? And these American schoolgirls facing period poverty and missing out on school in the nation that has the biggest defense budget in the world? and the rampant mass shootings, gun violence, and gun deaths. And those American female students who end up selling their dirty and unwashed underwear to men to finance their studies, and the impoverished American students selling their bodies to make ends meet. You claim that you care about children, but then why is it mentioned that nearly 500,000 children as young as 6 harvest up to 25% of all crops in the United States? Hundreds of thousands of children as young as 6 working on farms? Is this the 21st century America that they don't want you to know? And how about children who get poisoned while working on the United States tobacco farms in brutal and inhuman conditions? And how about the situation of child marriage in the United States, which is still legal in so many states? 300,000 children as young as 10 were married in the US between 2000 and 2018. America, can you hide that from us? Why this widespread pedophilia in the American churches and in American society? These numbers are humongous. Can we ignore that? And why are so many children being exploited through prostitution in America? And how about the American child sex tourists who commit sex crimes in other countries? And what about those Americans who adopt children from poor and developing nations and then sell them online after bringing them to the USA? Even a 10-month-old has been advertised online. Why, America, why? But what can be expected from a country where rape is an epidemic and the vast majority of them are not even reported? And the criminal justice system with an outcome as pathetic as this? Or how about this deadly and extremely widespread abortion violence? You claim to support women's rights and then have these super strict laws regarding abortions. You talk about pluralism and inclusivity and then pass legislation that promotes your monotheistic concept of God for your national motto, In God We Trust. And how about your war crimes and the bombing of other countries to bring your so-called peace and your version of democracy? And how about your colleges and universities, many of which don't hire non-Christians as full-time faculty members and administrators? and the American Christian projects that are still working for the total evangelization of the world. Won't that destroy our global diversity? And of course, the American government agency, USAID, has awarded its funds to evangelical organizations that had a clear proselytizing agenda. And how about those American presidents who had a personal relationship with Billy Graham, a man who sought total evangelization of the world and whose son has these views about Hindus? And how about the Dodd Buster attacks? How Hindu-phobic and brutal was that? America, you know that your economy is greatly dependent on a workforce imported from other nations, so please, don't forget what they have gone through. America, don't forget that you became an economic power in the first place because your slave-driven cotton industry in your southern states led to the cotton monopoly whose returns power the modernization of the rest of the American economy. And don't forget the truth that forced labor of African Americans is what made the United States powerful and rich. America, don't forget that the subsidiaries of your largest bank, J.P. Morgan Chase, accepted enslaved people as collateral for loans. When some of those loans defaulted, the American banks took ownership of those slaves. America, don't forget that your founding father, Thomas Jefferson, used his slaves as collateral and took out a $2,000 slave equity loan in Amsterdam. America, don't forget what your first bond market was about. America, don't forget that you have used slaves, human beings who were kidnapped from Africa as human property to secure loans or pay debts that generated huge amounts of capital for you. 
America, can we forget how in your land of the free and the home of the brave, thousands of African Americans were lynched, how Latin Americans were lynched in Texas, or how the Chinese were mass lynched in Los Angeles? Or can we forget the American way of lynching, in which many lynchings were treated as planned spectacles or carnival-like events, which were advertised in newspapers? They were treated as entertainment in many cases to white crowds, Families would go to lynchings with their picnic lunches, children were encouraged to participate, souvenirs were produced and sold from the remains of victim bodies, and postcards were produced featuring photographs of the lynching and corpses. America, can we forget the story of Mary Turner or the brutal Tulsa massacre? But even today, the horror continues in the United States. Yes, it has been observed that lynchings in the USA have never stopped and continue in the 21st century. Yes, racism has never left America, and in various ways, the oppression or discrimination of African Americans, Native Americans, and other minorities continues even today. Racism dwells within the fabric of America's institutions, and sufferings continue. This investigation reveals that even today, the United States has more than a thousand places, including its towns, lakes, and mountain peaks, whose official names evoke racial oppression or reflect racism. These are a few examples. Read these names. Check these maps. Here is the racist place name index for African Americans. And this one for Asian Americans. Yes. This is the reality of the country that acts as if it is the moral superpower of the world. But if you are an American, and the next time you stand up to sing the land of the free and the home of the brave, please think of the 12 or 18 years old girl that the author of these words purchased, and think of my video that I am lovingly dedicating to you. And please, share my work with your fellow Americans, because this can re-educate them, this can help the United States look within, help itself introspect, and help it heal. See you again!